big topic for Muslim comedians because we have to go to the airport looking like this. Okay, let me tell you something right now. It's really weird to me that people are scared of me in an airport. Because if you really think about it, I'm the most scared guy in the airport. I'm most likely to get shot over a misunderstanding in an airport. I roll up to the TSA thing, like my heart is already racing, man. I put my bag on the conveyor belt. There's a little voice in my head like, oh my God, what's gonna happen now? What's gonna happen now? Then I start arguing with myself. Nothing's gonna happen now, stupid. There's nothing in your bag. Yeah, but still. It's a good point, it's a good point. I start getting nervous, man. They got scary signs in the airport. I'm sure you've seen them, right? If you see something, say something. It's a pretty ambiguous set of instructions. If you see something, Beautiful crowd coming out tonight. Wonderful, beautiful. Every single color of the rainbow, every part of the world. It's a beautiful thing, man. We have a beautiful, large, diverse Muslim community, don't we? Because I'm from Chicago, we have a ton of Muslims. In fact, we have these uncles in the community. They're always bragging about it. Yeah. We have 500,000 Muslims in Chicago. Just you think it. <laughs> we are having 7 million Muslims in America. Can you imagine? <laughs> Are bhai, we are having 1.2 billion Muslims in the whole entire world. As if he had something to do with it. Always exaggerating and bragging, right? When I first came to this country, we used to pray Juma Namaz inside of a closet. <laughs> Community is growing. <laughs> but the thing is, he's bragging to his friends at work. <laughs> Can you believe it, Bob? <laughs> Seven million Muslims in America. He thinks Bob is impressed. <laughs> he's not, he's scared. Talking to his coworkers over lunch, you know. Did you hear that Abdul talking about seven million of them? We got to do something about us. We're crying out loud. We're crying out loud. I heard a reporter on Sky News say at least one person killed in suicide bomb attack. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> that is the bare minimum you need to qualify. It was something about burning a copy of the Quran in Afghanistan. I was watching it thinking, I would never burn a copy of the Quran because I've got a Kindle. <laughs> Just delete it, don't fuck about. <laughs> I'm not worried about Islamic suicide bombers, they can only do it once. A Hindu suicide bomber, that is more of a threat. <laughs> because of the reincarnation. <laughs> oh, I don't know what's going on. I was going to talk to you about terrorist threat levels in this country because our government have picked the weirdest words for our terrorist threat levels. You know, sometimes they announce them at the end of the news. The weather, the pollen count, and then the terrorist threat level for no reason at all. And it's words that I don't understand. So at the moment, the terrorist threat level in this country is substantial. I asked a police officer, what am I meant to do with substantial? He said, watch yourself. I said, well, I'm not involved. Do you know what the highest terrorist threat level is? How's this for a creepy word? Imminent. What the fuck am I meant to do with imminent? <laughs> I imagine clench. I mean, I've never been near a bomb when it's gone off, but I imagine that. Take the edge off, wouldn't it? 
And we all know that isn't the highest terrorist threat level. The highest terrorist threat level, as we all know, is I don't care if this does look racist, I'm getting off the bus. <laughs> that is a massive rucksack, and he doesn't need to be saying these prayers out loud. I'm fucking doing one. Where middle class guilt is overtaken by fear, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> of course, with these jokes, I could face the wrath of Islam, which I've always thought sounds like a shit pub. <laughs> Where are we going? Wrath of Islam. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> there's no booze, there's no fruit machine, there's no pork scratchings. <laughs> yeah, but women can get stoned. Because Ebola was one of the craziest things I've ever seen in terms of the human condition, how quickly we're taught to panic. You know, one minute I'll be flying, I'll see people of Middle Eastern descent getting pulled, you know, random selections beeping through the machine. And then Ebola happened, and all of a sudden the focus shift. The focus shifted, and now it was Africans getting pulled aside, Africans waiting. Middle Easterners were cruising through security. <laughs> And then almost as quickly as it started, it flipped back overnight. And I'll never forget when it happened. Right after the Charlie Hebdo attack in Paris. That attack happened, and almost the next day, Ebola wasn't a thing anymore. <laughs> Middle Easterners were back in the spotlight. Normal service had been resumed. Because after Charlie Hebdo, I would walk through airports and no one gave a damn. They didn't care about me, where I was from, nor the bananas in my bag. <laughs> I just, I just cruised through security. Charlie Hebdo, terrorist attack in France. Everyone led with it, CNN, breaking news, terrorists have attacked Charlie Hebdo headquarters. BBC, and in, and in breaking news, unconfirmed reports are saying 12 people have been killed by terrorists who have attacked. Everyone said they were terrorists. It was weird to me, because we didn't know that they were terrorists. We just knew that they were Middle Eastern. But immediately we went to terrorists. Because if you're Middle Eastern, that's a terrorist. That's the world we live in now. Yeah, if you're Middle Eastern, terrorism is your trademark. It's so crazy how easy it is to get people to hate a group of people, because that's what happened. Charlie Hebdo, and then everyone started saying things about Muslims. These damn Muslims, these damn, we gotta stop Islam. That's what we gotta do. We gotta stop these Islamists, these Muslims. Now, I'm not saying all Muslims are terrorists, but all terrorists are Muslims. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really smart, doesn't it? It sounds really smart. Yeah, but it's not. It's stupid and it's hate speech. That's what it is. It really is. So the first question is this, uh, what did you find funny in the videos that you watched and what did you find not funny? So we'll start with Andy. Uh, it's, my memory is not that great in terms of the names, uh, but the first comic with the, the beard, I thought the, when he was describing his experience in the airport, yeah. that was pretty funny. Uh, because I think that he pointed out that there is the fear on his side, uh, being Muslim, uh, going through security rather than uh, what we're normal. So he turned the normal xenophobia on its head, and, and I thought that was funny. Yeah, I also thought uh, the first one, the guy with the beard, was funny, especially that when he said, when we go to the airport, everyone is scared, but we are the ones who are scared, because I feel, <laughs> I feel the same. I know like I'm going to... Every time I'm walking through the checkpoint, I, I don't know what's going to happen. And, and one time I was kind of, uh, officers took me from the plane, and there's always something happening just for security reasons. The first comic I thought was, was really funny. He, um, the, the way he turned it on its head was, um, <clears throat> I think that was a, a good way to play it, I guess. Um, you know, I should say something, I should say something, he yells, Allah Akbar, you know, it, which, you know, stereo, you know, stereotypically, TV makes fun of that, you know. Okay, uh, I think most of the part I like, they found funny, and uh, I, my observation is that uh, 
contents are really serious, but they made it funny anyway. And uh, the one important aspect that tricked my mind is like uh, the, the term Middle East. And it makes some special sense. And I think that's very interesting that when going to or coming from Middle East is actually makes some sense that the Muslims and then other associated meanings I find from there. So although that was funny, but that's very serious uh, issue, I would say. And the airport thing is very common sense things. And that happens all the time. It happened even to me. So um, although he presented in a very funny way, but that's not actually the funny things. That's, for, for the person like me who experienced um, that security hurdles and know what is that, yeah. So some of you already touched on this, but I'll just ask specifically, did anything make you uncomfortable watching this? Um, was there anything specifically that you didn't feel comfortable laughing at, I guess? Yeah, I also, when that guy was saying stoning and these kinds of things, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't feel like any, yeah, I didn't enjoy it. And if I was the one watching it, I might have probably just stopped watching it. Yeah. English guy, um, about the the weather cast, this kind of thing, then the threat alert or threat level. So that was really something <laughs> kind of irritating. I don't know whether it is real or not, but it's something like that. It means people are always in kind of, fear that they have all this. So it is really uncomfortable that in, in, in your social situation you, you, you can't uh, leave and move freely, right? So those things really um, travel somewhere else. So. The question I'd like to ask you is, um, uh, would you ever feel comfortable repeating any of the jokes that you heard in a you know casual setting, that kind of thing? Because I mean, we often see comedy and we, you know, laugh at stuff and sometimes we repeat it, but would any of these qualify as things that you do that with? I like the first guy. I would I would maybe like try to re repeat that, but not to like anybody. I feel like it'd be someone who I felt like would understand and get it. Like uh, I have a lot of friends who are, who are Muslim, a lot of friends from Saudi Arabia, and so I might you know, tell it to them because they might be like, oh, because you know, like, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> Allahu Akbar is not a bad thing. It's like part of a prayer. Like, it's not even, it's nothing bad. And I don't know, I think for the right person, you know, that, that would be funny. Yeah. I listened to the, the BRL guy and the first time I was really impressed and especially about the issues. And kind of it was an uh, expectation in my mind that someone, someone should raise the issues. It's there, but it's not in the popular um, culture. So. That should be something like that. So when I first time saw um, his uh, comedy, and I was really impressed about, he was making a lot of very practical life references, and those are really good. But it's still, the thing is that, um, as far as as far as the religion is concerned, sometimes some symbols, some issues, some ideas are really sensitive. You know, especially for the practicing Muslims. Um, I mean, I would say in general. So. There are things they might not feel comfortable at those, like the Allah Akbar is very, um, for example, I practice Islam, so that is also very something we care about that. So if uh, you use these kind of symbols in a very uh, funny way, or you place somewhere that makes a different meaning, it would be really uncomfortable. So my uh, my point is too, first, that um, the comedy is a very good way to raise this kind of very discriminatory experiences, and I would recommend this kind of um, comedy, but at the same time, when the subject matter of the comedy is Islam, or the, the Muslims, or the Muslim women, like these stoning things, the burqa, or, or the things, then I think that will make that will frustrate people, that will be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So for me, I mean, that should be a balance so that people have more sense of that. Uh, 
my next question, and this is again something that some of you have already mentioned in, in brief, uh, but do you guys think these jokes help or hurt the public perception or image of uh, Muslims around the world? I think Trevor Noah helps. Uh, I think that's probably why he landed the, the um, Daily Show gig. Um, yeah, I think uh, jokes and humor in general, they help with uh, changing people's attitude and perceptions about the bad things they see on Fox News or whatever they have a bad uh, attitude toward Islam. So if uh, the jokes are used correctly, they can have uh, a good impact. If they're used incorrectly, they're going to have the opposite impact. So like the British guy's uh, joke, or maybe if someone is using jokes against Islam, it's going to have a negative impact, of course, in Islam. While Trevor Noah, or that first guy with the beard, yeah, it will be would show that uh, the positive impact that we're not terrorists, we are just regular people, we are funny, we, have, we tell our stories. Yeah. Um, so so that, that sort of leads into the next question of, um, you know, when, when we're watching comedians, they have a certain amount of, of context and credibility because they're on stage and, you know, this is, you're there with a certain mindset, I suppose. Um, if you had heard any of these jokes outside of the comedic context, would you feel differently than you did watching them? Yeah, I mean, I would say that, uh, of course, that uh, um, my understanding or my reaction to that would be different because I understand the intention of the of the show here is is more about just uh, pleasing people with funny stuff and. Uh, but when I would, I would hear the same in a non-community context, that would be something very serious. And that is what we have been listening, I mean, for, I mean, especially after 9-11. I, I think that it definitely makes a difference who's, what the setting is and who's saying it. So I know these, most screens were, you know, trying to shed light on, uh, on a subject and make, make light of it but you know, bring it to kind of to the forefront a little bit. Um, but if I heard it from somebody else, like if I heard my mother saying these jokes, I would question what her motive is, because I, I, I dated a Muslim man for, start for a few couple years, and uh, she very much did not like that, and she would say lots of negative things. Honestly, I consider kind of, her kind of racist against Muslims. And um, so if I heard someone like her saying it, I would question her motive. So it definitely makes a difference of who's saying it and what the setting is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The same, like who's saying the joke and what the setting. For example, like when we were going to a comedy show, uh, like they went to a comedy show uh, for Russell Peters. So they know him. He's they know what he says. He say offensive things, and I'm going. I want him to pick on me. They want him to make fun of my group. You know, I know. <laughs> I, they want this. I'm fine, but. If uh, he goes outside to people who probably don't like that, they not they don't want him to, or they don't know him very well. They don't know that this is what he do with all the different groups, even about himself. So, yeah, it depends on who's saying it, the setting. If you have the intention, you know this person, and you don't mind. You know, like I'm going to this place, and I know this person is gonna do this, so I'm fine with it. Like sometimes our professors, they when they discuss the intercultural or. Um, the interfaith things and sometimes they make some very funny comments or so I don't know my experience in those situations was not um, something very challenging because I was very clear about the intention the motive of the professor why he was saying that and but you know it's more actually, actually I learned from Islam that Every actions, um, the, the the reaction of every actions depends on the motive, what you intended. So sometimes professors themselves make kind of very uncomfortable um, comments or funny things, and those actually touches the minds of the of the Muslim student differently. Uh, so how do the comedians' backgrounds 
affect how they tell the joke and how does it affect the way that you receive that you listen to and you receive the the joke as well yeah um, I think the the background the heritage the beliefs of, of each one it, it I take it differently coming from somebody who's if you're speaking about Islam and you are a Muslim I think that I take that much differently than um, I would take that from an American, from a, from anybody, honestly, um, because it's something you know, um, you have experience with, and I think generally it's going to be a little more heartfelt coming from a better place. I might talk about that kind of earlier with like my mother. If she said something like a joke. I don't think it'd be coming from a good place, <laughs> but if. You know, I don't. I think most of these comedians were, you know, trying to raise awareness about something and uh, trying to make valid points. Yeah, yeah, can I add something to this because mm -hmm. uh, it's something related? Because my wife is white, and she, when she talked to her family about Islam, mm -hmm. they don't take it seriously from her. They don't believe her. They think she doesn't know. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, when I talk to them and I explain things, I feel like they have a different mindset. Even though she's saying the same thing, and she probably, uh, but you, people yeah. don't take it seriously from her. She's like a white girl, and she's probably uh, she doesn't have credibility of saying this. But when I talk to them, they they take what I'm saying seriously. So this is something she always complained to me about. That people think that she doesn't know, or she's like people are. Lying to her, telling her things, <laughs> <laughs> and also they have, they have the knowledge. So it's it's fairly understandable that uh, most of the com comedians they have very sound understanding about things, and that's how they very comfortably make the uh, make funds. But still, if you have deeper knowledge, especially the history background, those things I think raise the credibility of the comedians.